Hello friends, welcome back to Scientific Blunders, where you learn the don'ts first. So, friction is one of those very interesting things, um, because most people view friction, or most engineers view friction as, you know, something that's undesirable. So, friction leads to a waste of energy, friction appears, you know, frictional forces lead to the loss of energy which appears in the form of heat. And so it's often considered to be one of those undesirable things. But the truth is we actually depend heavily on friction um, in many engineering applications. Um, not even engineering. Something as simple as you and I being able to walk is because of friction. We are able to drive on roads. That's also because of friction. We, in fact, we depend on air resistance for a parachute to work. And so that's another form of friction, right? And so without air resistance, without that friction, you couldn't have the confidence to let someone jump off an airplane um, with a parachute, right? So you are really, really dependent on friction in that scenario. So having said that, friction is almost a necessary evil in today's world. It is sometimes, or in many cases, um, an undesirable thing because of the loss of energy in the form of heat um, but in many scenarios it is very much necessary so having paid our tribute to friction um, let's work on the problem at hand so we want to find the frictional force on the block in the given scenarios and so we have a block of mass m 10 kilograms both scenarios in one case the friction frictional coefficient is 0.2 or in both cases it's 0.2 and in one case, uh, we're looking at, you know, the static case where the block is stationary and an external force of 10 newtons is being applied on the block. And in another case, there's no external force being applied on the block. But, you know, at the moment that we're observing the block, it's moving at 10 meters per second. And so this is the, these are the given scenarios. And we want to find the frictional force on the block, right? So the first thing you do is to draw the free body diagram, right? So the net force or the force due to the gravitational attraction of the earth or the weight of the block is going to be mg and you know we can assume that g is 10 meters per second squared so mg is going to be 100 newtons um, and then there's a normal reaction that's also going to equal so the normal reaction due to the ground is going to equal 100 newtons and you know that's the same for both scenarios so i don't see anything different here so the weight of the block is 100 newtons which is mg and the normal reaction due to the ground is also going to exactly balance that and we know that because the block is not going to accelerate in this direction so the acceleration is zero in this direction so the net forces must be zero in that direction by newton's second law Right. We also know the standard um, formula for calculating the frictional force, right? Let me scroll down a little bit. And the standard formula is the frictional force equals mu times the normal reaction. Correct? And mu is 0 0.2 uh, and the normal reaction is 100. So the frictional force is going to be 20 newtons, right? And friction is always going to oppose the direction of tendency of relative motion. So without friction, the block would move freely in this direction. Oops. Okay. And now because of friction, uh, it's going to oppose the tendency of relative motion. So friction is going to act in that direction uh, with a magnitude of 20 newtons. So we have an external force of 10 newtons in this direction. And friction is going to act in this direction in 20 newtons. And if you think about it, uh, the frictional force is, because the coefficient of friction is same, so it's still going to be mu times n, and everything is the same, right? Mu was 0 0.2, n was 100, and so it's just going to be 0 0.2 times 100, which is 20 newtons. And yes, the same thing. So the block was moving in this direction, so friction is going to oppose relative motion so frictional force is going to act in that direction 20 newtons okay and we appear to be done right 
I don't know if you guys noticed, but let's just look at the static case one more time. Okay, we have a force of 10 newtons acting in this direction. We have a frictional force of 20 newtons acting in the opposite direction. So that means the net force on the block from what we just drew. Let me just pick a different color, maybe this one. So it looks like the net force in the block, so there's 10 newtons in this direction, 20 newtons in the opposite direction. So the net force in the block is going to be 10 newtons in the towards the left, which means the acceleration of the block would be um, 10 newtons divided by the mass, which is 1 meters per second squared to the left. Isn't something wrong here? Because you're applying, just, just think about it intuitively, okay? There's a stationary block, you appear a for, you, sorry, you apply a force to the right and friction somehow pushes the block to the left. So what we have just done here is a classic uh, mistake uh, when it comes to static friction. And what exactly do I mean by that? So, we have to be careful um, because here the block is static while here it's kinetic. So, the force, the kinetic force or the kinetic frictional force will be the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal reaction and this is correct. So, everything we did here was correct. But the frictional force, the static frictional force is related to mu s times n, but it is not always equal to mu s times n. And that is why we got this unintuitive result, right? We have to remember that the maximum uh, static frictional force is mu s times n. So it can take any value that ranges from zero, and I'm talking about the magnitude, it can take any value that ranges from zero up to mu s times n. Uh, once the external force is high enough for the block to start moving, then the static coefficient of friction no longer makes a difference. Um, it's only the kinetic coefficient of friction, right? So, my physics sir, I remember, he always used to say, you know, even though generally we think about statics to be easier than kinetics, um, static friction is the hardest, one of the hardest problems you will ever face because it you know, it's not easy to find the value of friction. You cannot just say, okay, it's mu k times n. It could be anything um, up to mu s times n. So, if, if I had to redraw the free body diagram, okay, let's scroll down a little bit more. Be here. So, if I had to redraw the free body diagram, so there's a block of mass m, correct? And um, it is not floating. Uh, it is on the ground and so we are going to experience the so that's going to stay the same a weight of 100 newtons the normal reaction is still going to be the same of 100 newtons the external force is still going to be the same 10 newtons but now to find the static frictional force we first find the maximum value it can take the maximum value is 0.2 times 100 so the maximum value is 20 newtons, but it can take any number between 0 and 20. In this case, it will only take 10 newtons because it will just be just enough to prevent motion, right? So, so the value of static friction that we computed earlier was not correct. It was the maximum possible value, but in this scenario, it will only take the value 10 newtons, which is basically this number. So it will just be enough to prevent relative motion. And so, I hope you found this video useful and this was a very simple example, I agree. But um, the real purpose of this video is to help you to be, uh, to realize that be extra careful um, when dealing with static friction because you cannot, wow, this was a, sometimes these tools seem to have a mind of their own.
okay <laughs> um, so be extra careful when you're dealing with static friction because you cannot use a single value right you it's a range of values anywhere from 0 to mu s times n and so you have to be um, careful and pick the right value that lies in this range so with that I hope you found this video useful and I hope you are extra careful when you solve any pulley problems which are uh, stationary or mass block over wedge problems or so many different problems uh, where there is stat static friction involved. All right.